In this video, I'm going to show you a pretty powerful way of building UIs for your plugins. Up until now, we could only interact with our plugins by tapping on them, which triggered the function that was returned from our plugin. In this video, we're going to see a different approach. The plugin I'm about to show you does not even return a function to run when you tap on the plugin in the plugin pool. Instead, we are going to build macros that call functions from that plugin, essentially building a small mini UI for our plugin. So switching over to the show file, uh, let me show you first what the target setup that we're going to build is going to look like. So we can see here on this different screen, um, something that already went ahead and set up. Uh, so I already set up this macro pool and what it also includes is the plugin. Let me actually, hmm, let me get that right now. This is our second example plugin, by the way. Okay, example two, I don't know, blocks, wings, groups. All right, um, control A, control B does not work. So in case this happens to you, all you have to do is disable the command code, uh, command mode, and now you can go back in here and select everything. All right, something didn't work there early, but what you can see, what you can see here is that I already set everything up, including the macros that we are going to use to interact with this macro, uh, with this plugin, and also the plugin in the plugin pool. And what we can see here is that I built a small UI uh, to more easily set wings, blocks, and groups, something I always find pretty tedious to do from the MATRIX toolbar. So what I like about this setup is that I can increase and decrease wings, blocks, and groups with a simple tap of a macro, right? So by pressing this, you can see I'm increasing the wings, blocks, groups, whatever, and I can just go in here and actually enter values, so 11, 22, 33, and then whenever I'm tired of it, I can just go and reset it. And we can see that this is actually being used over here uh, as well, so it's all good. I mean, let me just demonstrate this. Wings, blocks, groups, perfect. So, this allows me to sort of build custom functionality based on these macros. And what's special about this is that if we look into the macros, we can see that they are simply calling individual functions from our plugin. So if we take a look at this, for example, we just call set and then um, tell it to set locks and that triggers a function, which we'll see in a second. This just increases the blocks while this over here calls increase but with wings and this is all it takes um so basically our macros are incredibly dumb because they simply call functions while the complete functionality lives inside of our plugin so let's take a look at the plugin code uh, to figure out how i did that first thing that you will notice about our plugin is that it does not even return a function so in this case when you tap on the plugin nothing happens and that's intentionally. Basically all this plugin does is to create variables that store our current blocks, groups, and wings, and it defines the function which we can then call from the macros. And the basic structure of this plugin is pretty simple. We have two central functions which we will use in the local, um, the variables to set the wings, blocks, and groups and uh, in matrix. And then we have a function that always outputs our current setting. And those are, Let's see. Mm, 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 mm. Right, so this kind of prints all these um, current values and then this makes sure that whatever um, wings, blocks, and groups we have set up up here are actually being inserted. All right, the other functions that we have here let us increase and decrease wings, blocks, and groups, right? So. What you can see here is that we um, use this ink function and depending on whether we specify wings, blocks, groups, it will actually take one of these variables. And what's cool is that since we build these two functions, all we have to do down here 
to put it all into motion is to um, call the update wings blocks groups function and the print wings blocks groups. And then the decrease function pretty much works the same way. It just um, kind of, you know, reduces the, the wings. And what's also special here is that we make sure that the wings, the blocks and the groups, they never sort of get to be uh, low a certain value. So, um, you know, we can't set or in this case, we don't want to set negative values. Um, and you can actually change that around. Some of these can actually have negative values. Um, in this case, we just want to make sure that we have sort of these minimum values. And again, uh, you call the update wings blocks and groups functions and like that, set it into motion. Then, um, then at the bottom of this plugin, we have functions to set wings blocks and groups um, directly and also to reset them. So we can see here that, um, you know, depending on the type again that we put in here, that, um, you know, we have a different text input. And um, what I also do here, and that's, again, a really clever way to use default values, I insert the old values, right? Um, and then we have this reset function, which kind of resets everything. And again, um, because we always want to um, set the latest values in motion and have that be used by MA tricks, uh, we always call the update function and then we also give feedback to the user by using the print function. All right. So another trick that you can see here is that all of our functions merely modify the local variables and then all of them call these two functions that we just saw to update these values into MA tricks and print out the current settings. Now jumping back to our macros uh, is that all we do here after we tap the, the plugin, um, you know, we can see that once those functions are defined, um, all we have to do then is actually, um, you know, call them from the macros. It's really important though to note that we have to run this plugin to actually make sure that the functions that we define here are accessible from inside of Lua. And then we can simply use the Lua command to call up these functions. All right, then all that's left to do is to create the respective macro UI. You can see that, um, you know, I just defined these macros in this um, macro pool. Um, you can even go ahead and create custom layout with custom graphics for these macros, but mostly that's overkill in my opinion. Um, so defining clever layouts with your macro pool laid out like that, um, is more often than uh, and is actually more than enough most of the time. And this is actually really simple to set up or to import actually, if you sort of create a template shell file. So if you can rather go for something like that. And there you have it. This trick itself is really simple. All the functions that you define in your plugins can be called from the macros using the Lua command. And if you make use of this trick, your macros should be incredibly simple. Think of it this way. The macro should contain no logic at all. They are the dumb part, simply calling the functions with parameters from your plugins. So your plugins are the only smart parts here containing all the logic, exposing that logic through very simple to use functions that you can call from your macros. And it also contains the data. And that's this trick using plugin functions from within macros. I think this is a great trick because it allows you to um, use so much more of your plugins um, throughout your show file. And like that, you can really build very complex systems really easily by defining very, very mighty and powerful plugins, but then kind of, um, you know, build the interaction with this plugin from within macros or layout views or sequences, whatever you prefer.